palm oil has been closely associated with environmental destruction and negative social impacts. And, but it doesn't have to be like that. So in 2004, industry and NGOs got together to make a difference and to turn the production of palm oil into the sustainable production of palm oil. And the ambition is to make this the norm for the global trade, for the global market in palm oil. The RSPO, we work, we only work on sustainability, on social and environmental sustainability. We do not work on nutrition and health aspects of palm oil. Um, but from the, the personal care and the cosmetics industry, because, because people care about the ingredients that go onto the lipstick, they don't want to be wearing lipstick that might be a, associated with um, destruction of valuable rainforests, for example. Well, we have a very comprehensive set of criteria which palm oil growers can become certified against. They can sell their palm oil as certified sustainable palm oil. And then the, the buyers, for example in Europe, can buy it as certified sustainable palm oil. And the more we buy, the more, the, the more can be produced as certified sustainable. So it's a, a supply and demand uh, voluntary initiative. You know, all, pretty much all experts agree that the best alternative to unsustainable palm oil is sustainable palm oil, that boycotting palm oil or looking for, you know, substitution of palm oil is not the solution. Palm oil is the most, by far, high, highest yielding of the edible oil crops. And so in a world where we're facing the huge population rises that we are facing and where we need the land, then the consensus is that palm oil is here to stay and it's in and, in and of itself, palm oil isn't the problem. The problem is the way in which palm oil has been produced and continues to be produced by many, many producers unsustainably. Let's remember that the RSPO is successful, but we still only can claim 16% of the market. So there's still 84% that's being produced unsustainable standards. And that's what we want to focus on, growing that 16%. The food sector represents the sector that uses the most palm oil um, compared to other sectors. So we can get quite a lot of, um, you know, quick wins, if you like, from making progress in the food sector. But there's also the personal care and the cosmetic sector. They, um, they use much less palm oil derived ingredients, but they're still, you know, important to work with. There's the hospitality sector um, and catering, and then there's the animal food sector as well as the other main sector that uses palm-derived ingredients that goes into animal feed. So the transformation of the palm oil supply chain is taking place partially through what the consumer wants and the reputational risks that companies perceive um, and their social license to operate um, and they want to transform their palm oil supply chain to be in accordance with people's ethics but at the same time we can say that the business case for a consumer driven change is quite limited and actually um, it's really up to companies to become responsible companies and to do the choice editing to make those changes on behalf of their consumers who may be aware, but mostly they're probably quite unaware of the issues around palm oil. But as responsible stakeholders, they're, they're making those changes um, anyway. The main incentives for businesses to make the changes are supply chain risks mm. and reputational risks. They may have made uh, public policy commitments to, for example, climate change. And so by sourcing sustainable palm oil, that's also helping them meet their commitments. Um, but it, it's hard to say to what extent consumers are driving this. And I, I, I think it's agreed that it's mainly businesses that are driving the change. However, at the end of this year, 
there will be some food information for consumer regulations, EU regulations. And in December, half a million, sorry, half a billion European consumers will become aware that their food contains palm oil. And in anticipation of this and a potential consumer backlash, we're seeing quite a lot of activity um, for companies who want to very quickly um, become members of the RSPO and buy certified sustainable palm oil. Well, I would say the catering and hospitality sector and the animal feed sector are at the moment the slowest sectors to move and that's probably because they don't face as much reputational risk as those that have con consumer facing businesses. Um, so they're the slowest to act at the moment. The innovation that I would, I would think benefit as the most would be if we can find a cost, of, a cost effective engineering solution to enable all the all the buyers that want segregated sustainable palm oil to be able to have that without without it costing a lot of money.